week's edition of Ron's Live Web TV. And based on your request, this week I'm going to discuss what prospects to select to make all cash deals on. Because this is a bargain bonanza out there. And uh, I'm telling you, I'm making offers on, um, on properties that are bank owned as fast as I can go. And I hope you're doing the same thing. Now, I will tell you that most of the properties you're going to pay all cash for right now are going to be bank owned. I used to call them the ugly house business, but they're not so ugly anymore. I'm buying properties that need very little work on them. So I'm, I'm kind of afraid to call it the ugly house business because you might actually think they're ugly. But let me tell you what I used to select them with. And frankly, I've been doing this for a long, long, long time. And my selection criteria has changed very little from the very beginning days when we was doing it back in the 80s all the way up to now. Now, my numbers certainly have changed, but not really my selection criteria. So let me go down the list here, and I'll just show you what we do. Number one, and the number one most important selection criteria is, I don't care if it comes from the MLS system, if I'm going to an auction, if I'm attending an online auction, if I'm buying at the courthouse steps, or if I'm buying at a tax deed sale, which are kind of where I'm getting my junkers from right now, I'm always looking for the difference between the gap of, from the ARV and the asking when applicable. Now, of course, if I'm buying at a at a uh, auction, there is no asking. There's only a minimum bid, so the asking is kind of irrelevant. But if I'm buying out of the MLS, it is totally relevant. So what I'm looking for are properties that are listed well below what I know the ARV to be. And incidentally, if you need help figuring out what the ARV is, go back and watch my recent lesson on how to determine the market value of a house, because that is something you're going to have to be able to do to be able to make an offer on a house. Uh, it's not difficult, plenty of websites to help you do it, but it is something you have to be able to do. Uh, so I'm looking for properties, and let's say I'm, I, I'm in a neighborhood and I'm making offers in that particular neighborhood. I find out what, uh, what I think the ARV is of anything that's on the market. So I'll tell you, let me skip down here a little bit because the first thing that I do, and this is what we do here every day, is I pick the properties that are listed in the zip codes that I want to work. There's only five zip codes in the Jacksonville market that I care about buying houses in. If they're not in my five zip codes, I don't even look at them. I don't really care where they come from. I just have lost interest in buying all over town. I can find all I need to do in this great market uh, in my five zip codes. And in fact, while I'm skipping around here a little bit, uh, let me go right here. This one brings me right here to the second one because I'm only looking for decent properties in decent neighborhoods. I don't want any more junk. I don't want any more of that low income crap. I don't want to go where all the problems are. I want to stay down here in the decent neighborhoods where I have less problems. And really it doesn't, regardless of my exit strategy, that's where I want to be. If I'm going to buy it, fix it, and uh, sell it to a qualified buyer, I want it in a good area. Good area where qualified buyers want to buy and where they're more qualified to buy. Not in the lowest of the areas. I want them in a little above that. In Jacksonville, I'm looking for houses that would uh, retail somewhere between a hundred and a quarter to four hundred thousand dollars, and uh, and that's a lot of houses. Now, I won't tell you I don't buy them cheaper than that because I buy townhouses and condos that are well below a hundred thousand dollars in R, but they're in beautiful neighborhoods in excellent condition, and some of them are like brand spanking new. So, if it comes to town uh, condos and townhouses, I'm going to adjust down my uh, numbers, but I am not going to change my areas. I still want them in my exact same areas, which is the zip codes that you're going to pick where you live. If you live in a big city, you can't buy all over the city. It'll just drive you absolutely nuts. So if we're buying in the MLS, I'm just, I'm just telling the realtors, pull me out the stuff that is listed well below what we think the ARV is. And that gives me a, a really good foundation to work with. For example, if I think the ARV is $200,000, and I got one listed in there for $135,000, then I know that it's a smaller gap between the one thirty-five dollars and what I'll pay than the two hundred dollars and what I pay. The closer it's listed to R, the bigger time waster it is. So I'm looking for the ones with the big gaps. Uh, time on the market is important because I find that if you're trying to bid on the property as soon as it comes on the market, then you're playing a losing game. Now, have I bought some as soon as they hit the market? Yeah. But the truth is, I get them a better deals after they've been on the market four, five, six, seven, eight months even. Because when they first come out on the market, the owner, the bank, 
has to play the market. It's not going to take a deeply discounted price as soon as it hits the market until it has time to test the market. But when it's been on there for months, they're going to ultimately they're going to take whatever offer comes at them when the time is right for them to liquidate the property. And every time I buy a property that's been on the market for six months or more, you do a little bit of research and you'll find that they had many offers well above what I got them to accept because I was there when it was time for them to accept it while everybody else there was fighting over them like wild rabbits trying to get the, 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 the little bit of feed as soon as they hit the marketplace. So frankly, I don't care about bidding on the ones right out of the gate. I, I'd rather just let the dust settle and take the ones that the realtors turn down the high offers and go back later and get them when the timing is right. And lastly, I don't want any major rehabs. Now it used to be, I look for major rehabs, but now I don't want major rehabs. If we can go out and we can buy properties that need very little work, I'm talking one, two, three, four, five, six thousand dollars worth of work to put them in excellent condition and we can get them at such deeply discounted prices like we're getting today, I don't know why on earth I'd want to buy a house that needs twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars worth of work. Why the costly entanglements? Why go through all that grief? Why go through all the time involved in getting it renovated? And besides, the market is so much smaller for my exit strategy. And when you get them where they need that much work, there's only one way to get rid of them. You got to either wholesale them or you got to renovate them. And if I wholesale them, I'm finding that my buyers don't want to do that, more, that much work either because they can go out and get them in not, not that bad a shape. So this is not the time to be buying major rehabs. And if I were you, I'd steer away from them. Unless you're a truly skilled investor and you have a handle on uh, where you're going to get the money and your exit strategy is clean. And if you are going to do these, for crying out loud, make sure there's a lot of profit in them. If I were going to do a uh, rehab that cost $25,000, $35,000, I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole if there wasn't at least $50,000 worth of net, net, net profit in it by the time I got through with all the expenses. And to be honest, I'd want more than that. So, I hope that helps. Uh, that's, that's, that's the criteria that I use to select the junkers with, so um, I, and, and tr believe me, today, that's exactly what we look for. Every single day, in fact, we go through that same process before we're out there making offers on junkers here where I live.